All right. So today's lesson is on trigonometry. Aren't we all excited? Because we're so thrilled about trig today. All right, so trig, this unit I've told you before is that it's a really important unit for pre calc. What we are learning today specifically is kind of the basics of pre calc that you'll be using again in a couple of years. So, trigonometric ratios. Remember, a ratio is a comparison of two values, right? So a trigonometric ratio is a ratio of two particular sides of a triangle. What we're learning today are three trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, as you see right here, sine, cosine, and tangent. And each of these compare two sides of a triangle. You notice the sine compares the opposite side to the hypotenuse. The cosine compares the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And the tangent combines that and compares the opposite to the adjacent. So notice these are actually all three combinations of two of the three sides. Now you can take sine, cosine, and tangent of either acute angle in your right triangle. Thus it is extremely important, it is imperative that you write in this x or whatever your angle may be. You cannot just write sine equals, cosine equals, and tangent equals. That is incorrect and you will get points taken off that. You must have the value, the angle measure in there. You must say sine of x, cosine of x, tangent of x, or cosine of a, or tangent of 28 degrees. You have to specify which angle you're talking about. All right, so let's first take a look at our triangle here. So this is for right triangles. And as we see, the side opposite of my hypotenuse, oops, the side opposite of my 90 degrees is called my hypotenuse. And then depending on which angle you're dealing with will determine what is your opposite side and your adjacent side. So since we are dealing with angle X here, the opposite side is the side across from there. And the adjacent side is the side that makes up that angle. So sine of X is the ratio of the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Cosine of x is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And tangent is the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. Opposite side to the adjacent side. So again, it's taking those two values, putting fraction of the adjacent. All right. To help us remember which one has opposite of hypotenuse, which one has adjacent hypotenuse, and which one has opposite adjacent, we use the phrase so. Uh, now, I love this phrase. I feel like when you start to say it, it sounds like you're changing something. So, ka, to, wa, so, ka, to, wa. In fact, when I was doing this yesterday, I was thinking to myself of uh, Finding Nemo, the part where he's going to Mount Wanahakalugi. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, wa, ku, ha, hi, ha, ho, ho, ho. So I actually looked it up and then I was chanting so, ka, to, wa with it. And it works out really well. So, so, ka, to, wa, so, ka, to, wa. So yes, we are chanting while doing that. So, it's good for you. Um, also, a friend in college told me that her teacher taught them to remember it by using the phrase, some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. However, but I personally like the chanting, so but it works for you. Or you can just remember what they are, but it's fun to change. All right, so questions so far before we actually apply these? Again, we can do Sokatoa of either angle in our triangle, so you must specify which one you're doing. So let's take a look at our first example. Here they have asked us to find sine of x, cosine of x, and tangent of x. So we are dealing with the angle labeled as x degrees. Notice we don't actually have to know the measure of the angle in order to take these trig ratios. Because the trig ratios aren't finding the angle measurement. What it's doing is comparing those two sides. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually have to know the angle measurement. All right, so since we're dealing with x, which side is my opposite side? The two. Okay. Which side is my adjacent? The one. And what is 4 to 5 called? 
Now, what if I actually asked you to find sine, cosine, and tangent of this table? So what would that do to your adjacent hypothesis, or in your opposite side? So we'd split them, right? Because this side opposite of this guy is actually over there. This side adjacent is actually this one. So it is very really important that you make sure you take a look at which angle you're talking about. Okay, so we're dealing with x, though. So sine of x... Why would you even care about the tangent of x? Why would you care about the tangent of x? Well, tangent is actually the point at which a line hits a circle at one specific spot. So that doesn't play over. Zero point five. It also two. Two. It also comes into play with the unit circle. Two over one is two. Why would you care about two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
again, we don't actually know the measure of angle A, but we don't have to know it. We're just comparing the sides that correspond with it. So sine of A, what would that give me? What is my opposite side? 45, good. And my adjacent side? 14. 14. My hypotenuse is what's across from my right angle there. So this is my opposite. This is my adjacent. All right, so what is sine of A, of angle A? Forty-five over fifty. Good. Forty-five over fifty. But can we reduce that? Nine over ten. Nine over ten. Good. All right, then let's do cosine. What does cosine of A give us? Fourteen over forty-five. Fourteen over fifty. And that reduces down to seven over twenty-five. And then finally, our tangent. What does tangent give us? 45 over 14. Make sure you don't get this with flop. Can we reduce that? No. Oh, good. Good. So, plateau. Questions on that one? Okay. So let's take a look at this guy. Okay, so they want us to find sine, cosine, and tangent of both y and s. So sine of y, cosine of y, tangent of y. And sine of s. Cosine of s, tangent of s. Okay, let's start off with sine of s. So here's s. What would sine be? What do we need for sine? We need the hypotenuse, don't we? Oh, bummer! We don't have the hypotenuse! How can we find it, though? Uh, we don't know if it's a 40, 60, 90, or 30, 60, 90. We don't know if it's 45, 90, but the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so using the Pythagorean theorem, we have square root of 4. Square root of 4. I gave you guys a nice one. Nice. Thank Plus square root of 2 squared equals x squared. So that gives us x equals square root of, square root of 6. Do we agree? So that looks bad. Okay, so now what is sine going to be? Good. Square root of 2 over square root of 6. Now we could rationalize it. But let's make life easier on yourself. We can take this the same thing as square root of the whole thing. Whoa! Like, what? That was a. I made a mistake. And what is 2 over 6 reduced down to? 1 third. Oh, we still have to rationalize, don't we? Yeah. Alright. Alright. Let's rationalize over here. After too long, you'll be able to do this rationalize. Okay. So this simplifies down to root 3 over 3. Anybody not see what we did there? Did they have questions? Okay. So similar thing for cosine. What does cosine give us? What goes on top? Yes, Kate. Um, we did it wrong. You used, you used the opposite. You used the opposite. I'm doing sine of s right now. Um, Otherwise, you would be correct. It was y. Yeah. All right, so cosine of s. What's my adjacent? Good. Root 4. Root 6. We can simplify it. I'm guessing we're going to have to rationalize again because that reduces down to 2 thirds, right? Rationalize. We get root 6 over 3. Do you agree with that? She's like, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yes. 
so root 4 over 6 is the same thing as four, is the same thing as root 4 over 6, which reduces down to 2 over 3, which is root 2 over root 3. Then I rationalize, multiply by root 3 on both top and bottom. So I get root 6, this gives me 3. So this reduced down to root 6 over 3. Okay. Questions on that? Now, tangent, root 2 over root 4. Simplify once again. Oh, wait! What is root 4? Oh. 2 over 2. Because it's not a perfect square, root 6. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But we would have had a rational to me as well. So you could have you could have broken down to two over root six and then rationalized from there. Alright. Questions on that part? Alright, I want you to do sine of y cosine of y tangent. Yeah, so we just did sine, cosine, and tangent of s. I want you now to do it for y. Take the next two minutes and do it for y. All right, check your answers. Cos or sine of y is root 6 over 3. Cosine of y is root 3 over 3. And tangent of y root 2? Yes. Like, I forgot. I didn't even simplify the beginning. I rationalized. You could have just simplified from the yeah, beginning. Could just yeah. All right. Questions on that? We don't. Okay. Flip it over to the back side. So, we didn't have the angle measures for the front side, but now they give us some angle measures, and they want us to find the specific trig ratio of that. But we don't know these. But you do have this lovely green sheet in front of you where all of the values you could ever possibly want, okay, not all of them, but the main ones you could ever possibly want to know are right here in front of you. So let me pull up on the board. It doesn't have 48. Oh, but it does. So it's split 1 through 45. And then we have 46 through 90. Well, actually, not 90. They're 89. All right, so you'll notice sine, cosine, and tangent are three columns here. So we want sine of 48 degrees. So I go to sine of 48 degrees, and it's 0. 0.7431. So this is simply 0. 0.7431. So it already has the ratios... And it's unfortunately in decimal form. But it already has the ratios of all them simplified down completely. All right, so cosine of 89. So if I look at my sheet here, go to cosine of 89 degrees. Ooh, it's just a teeny little bit, 0 0.0175. All right, and then tangent. Of 57 degrees, same idea. Pull up my chart. Go to tangent of 57, and it's 1.5399. 1.5399. All right, so go and do D and E, cosine of 41 degrees, and tangent of 85. Values. That's written up here. Okay. So 
over the course of the next couple weeks, you'll actually work on memorizing each of these values. Whoa. Just kidding, it rules! Sarab said it and made me think it was a good idea. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> instead, keep this with you. Um, but I want you to take a look at something I find interesting. So... Ian, give me a an angle between 1 and 89. 35 degrees. All right, 78 degrees. Okay, what is the complement of 78 degrees? The one directly. 12. 12, good. So complement means what other angles complementary with it adds up to 90 degrees. So 12 degrees, right? So do me a favor, look on your chart and find sine of 78 degrees. Sine of 78 degrees. Come on, scroll down. Scroll down. All right, so sine of 78 degrees is 0.9781. Do we agree with that? Okay. Now I want you to look at cosine of 12 degrees. Wow. 0.978. How cool is that? So, sine of one angle is going to be exactly the same as cosine of its complement. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. I'm so jealous. Wait, what's the final? It's so neat. Geometry class. Just a normal program. All right, so and that's something interesting to take in mind, keep in mind for future reference. What does it mean, though? That they're complementary. Yeah, but what does it do? Like, is there like some formula? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's not some fancy thermal formula with it. It's an interesting tidbit of it. I'm sure it probably has impact on actual things, but I can look and find out for you. We'll see if there's great consequences for it. All right, so next up, let's take a look at these three. All right, so take a look at no, letter A here. Yeah, right. All right. Here they've given us the angle, but we don't have a side. So 36 degrees. If I do sine of 36 degrees, the old fashioned way what we first did, what is the setup for this in terms of our sides? Opposite over hypotenuse. So x over 152. Do we understand what we did so far? Yeah. Okay. So now we're trying to solve for x. So I need to get rid of my 152. Multiply both sides by. And oh, we know what sine of 36 degrees is. Look at your chart. What's sine of 36 degrees? 0.5878. So if we multiply by 152, that gives me my x by. Now. I could make you write that all out by hand, no, or I can finally let you have a calculator. So get out your calculator. My calculator, I forget to. If you don't have a calculator with you, that's fine. Just look off the person next to you, or watch what I'm doing here. <laughs> so locate sine, cosine, and tangent on your calculator. It's okay, we'll watch the graph over there. Sine, cosine, and tangent are all next to each other. They're best buds. And so let's go ahead and find sine of 36 degrees. I got 0.5877, which is what our chart said. But did anybody get a negative 0.9? Ah, so we are dealing with degrees, right? 36 degrees. Go to mode. There's the option of radians or degrees. You must be in degrees for geometry class. 
Yeah. Radians is in terms of pi. So you need to have it in degrees, which means degree needs to be highlighted. If you do not change it, you will get every single problem wrong. So you must have it in degrees. Move. And then make sure degrees highlight. If you need to change it, arrow down, over, and hit enter. Yeah. All right. So now that will take care of your issue. We can multiply this by 152. And we get our answer of? Let's run in three decimal places. 89.34. Perfect. All right. Questions on how we went about doing that? No. So then for y, we would set up cosine of 36 equals y over 152, then in your calculator, 152 times 36. Now, do hold on to this table because say you don't have your catheter with you, you lose it, you forget it, this is also lighter, this is a good thing to use. Okay, I'm going to pass out your homework to you, which is due next class, which is Monday. Monday.